it's a great joy for me to be here. And uh, okay, just check if they can hear. Okay. <coughs> um, it's a great joy for me to be here. And um, um, thank you so much, Venerable Elizabeth. And Gishi, the Venerable Gensela, and Venerable Tizrumala. And from um, Jimbala, and all my friends here, and <clears throat> Ben, who came all the way from Israel. Yes, and uh, for information, he's an, he's a young neuroscientist. Yeah, and so happy to see the uh, the faces from three years ago. Yeah. Mr. Martin and old, yes, and dear, yes, and um, so <coughs> today, so now at the moment, this is what Venerable Elizabeth asked if we can do a little bit of say the um, blessing of the stupa. Guru Bhadam Sambhava, the statue and the, all the places and uh, the, the we have to know Dharma on different levels. One is that the Dharma, the way the ordinary people see, another one is the Dharma in the real sense. So finally, I say the Guru Bhadam Sambhava, the, the, the stupa, to be very honest, they, um, they bless us rather than we blessing them. They bless us. But the ordinary people, we get a feeling that, oh, this statue is blessed by, you know, this, this, this teacher and so forth. Then they feel more connected. But in actuality, the great teachers like Sakya Pandita very clearly indicated that for the learned, for the wise, our noble beings, Anything of the religious Buddha, they are the source of blessings for you. But, but finally, uh, the, the real understanding of the blessing is that our mind should be blessed. Our mind should be blessed. And that our mind should be blessed in the form of transformed, getting transformed. That we should, our mind should be transformed from ordinary mind to eventually go closer, closer, closer towards the level of the Buddha Shakyamuni, the level of the great teachers like His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Lama Subarabuchi, and so forth, and the Guru Bhadra Sambhava, a lot of great teachers. So, this is the meaning of the blessing. Blessing, the Tibetan word is Chinlap. Chinlap means G is a gift, uh, the transfer transfer the elegance from one place to the other. So the Buddhist and Bodhisattvas, they have the, they have the greatest the elegance and they transfer it to us that our mind becomes more elegant. So how elegant? In ways to remove the mental defilements and that our Buddha nature inside becomes manifest. So this is the real meaning of the, uh, the blessing, the, tra the awakening you are Buddha energy inside. This is known as the blessings. So with this in mind, I'm not going to talk too much the this session because we have the uh, tonight, this evening is going to be orientation course for the, the rest of the days. And <clears throat> so it is at the uh, for this session is more for you know for our own awakening, creating the environment. Of the, the the blessings. Okay, with this in mind, the uh, Jimbala, you tell me whatever is available in the French. Yeah. Okay. So I remember from last time, we did this uh, the English version, and uh, you have the uh, French version. Yes. <coughs> okay. Those who have the English version will follow me, and those who have the French version. It's more or less the going in parallel. Okay. Um,
<coughs> okay. Um, with this in mind, the I'm sure uh, some of you must have been aware of His Holiness the Dalai Lama during the one of the recent teachings. His teaching on Shri Heruka, Shri Chakrasambhara teaching. There, his own towards the end, he made it very clear that if you see me as your guru, then the, you must practice the wisdom of emptiness, bodhicitta. So these two, we'll see that uh, these two are the, the something very concrete. Um, the over time, if you practice these two, I can't exp I can't assure you that you like have the experience of bodhicitta, wisdom, emptiness within one year, two years. But no doubt, over time, if you study extensively, then the and practice seriously, study, reflect, and practice seriously, over time, within a span of, depending on your uh, propensities, your past karmas, past imprints, um, within a span of like 10, it, 10, 15, 20 years time, uh, you will for sure, I cannot guarantee you about bodhicitta or the wisdom emptiness, but for sure you will have, feel the connection. You will feel that, oh, this is something a very different feeling, bodhicitta. Okay, the full flesh experience of bodhicitta depends on many factors. In some cases, it can take lives, lives that are life, many lives. Like with wisdom of emptiness, it can take lives of many lives. But you can have a taste of these two, like the heat. The fire is there, you could feel the heat. So this you will for sure experience in this life if we put concerted effort in this direction. The study, reflection, meditation on the Lamrim. Lamrim. And on that basis, with emphasis on the four seals for renunciation, then the Bodhicitta two methods and the wisdom of emptiness, study more extensively. No doubt, in this life, you'll get some feeling that, okay, now I can see that if I put a little effort, then the I'm heading towards bodhicitta, I'm heading towards wisdom of emptiness, that you will for sure uh, the feel it. So meanwhile, accumulating merit, merit accumulation is so important. Let us not be, you know, so impatient that I must have bodhicitta within okay, the next one week, next one year, bodhicitta, another one year, with my emptiness, then end the one year, then the okay, maybe tantra it may take two years, two to four years, I become enlightened, right? Don't expect that. This is not how it works. So, with the bodhicitta, with my emptiness, just imagine that for a, for a mother, for a mother. So the child, no matter how long it takes, the health of the child, the, if the child is sick, then the, no matter how long it takes, it doesn't matter. So my work is to make sure that this child becomes healthy. It may take one week, 10 months, one year, 10 years, 20 years, whole my life, it may take for me to, to nurse the child or do it. This is the mother's commitment. So this is how for us, for the, ch the mother, the child is the most important thing. Like was for us, the bodhicitta and wisdom emptiness, these two are the most important thing. And the foundation of bodhicitta should be the renunciation. So renunciation, bodhicitta and the wisdom of emptiness. And alongside the single part of meditation, that is also very important. Okay, then we say, uh, be where your teacher approves, where your teacher endorses, then tantric, tantric practice can be supplemented. And that is a different story. But this foundation, this must be there. And uh, this will guarantee you that, okay, now I found the meaning of my life. Okay, so with this in mind, uh, let us set a proper motivation. First, refuge field. I visualize Buddha Shakyamuni. His Holiness the Dalai Lama and all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in a space in front of you and your all respective teachers. Say the many of you, I'm sure you have uh, the Lama Sumba Rabinji as your teacher, so just and all the teachers that you can the, visualize them in front of you. And how you visualize them, that plays a very important role that they're so loving, caring, embracing. 
and um, how you visualize them that makes a difference in the intensity and the power of your refuge And the body to the field, visualize your two kind parents on the two sides, and all your family members, including your children, and all everyone here in Paris, all in France, in the world, and this are the the, the Milky Way galaxy and in the entire universe. In other words, all the beings, the human beings, animals, insects, hungry ghosts, hell beings, god and goddesses, asuras, gandharvas, all the beings living on the side. And here you are like the mother and imagine that you shower so much love and affection and embrace each of the sentient beings with love and affection, not neglecting even a single person, not leaving behind anyone. so far being together here is to activate this Buddha nature within us to activate your potential ultimate potential which is equally existent which is existent in the same intensity purity and um, as all other beings so that is to be done by the move of the metal dirt and the metal dirt there are two kinds uh, one is when the what obstructs us from what what create what attracts our miseries refer to as the afflictive obscurations and the other which pushes away all your happiness or referred to as the cognitive obscurations so our job is to remove these two and the remedy that actually removes these two is the wisdom of emptiness and this wisdom of emptiness requires the motivation the motivation and the if the motivation is just the renunciation then it will help us to remove this wisdom will help us remove the afflictive obscurations whereas the motivation is renunciation plus bodhicitta then these wisdom emptiness help us to remove the cognitive obscurations as well and the tantric practice it is to to be supplemented to expedite this path to become enlightened for the benefit of sentient beings. So, the, 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 the let us invoke the spirit. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all sentient beings. That I personally feel this very important. The, the the analogy yourself as a very young girl or a young boy, age let's say age twelve, boy or girl, and then all others are your siblings, your brothers and sisters who are younger than you, and your parents are there just observing what you're doing, and you are encouraging, you inspiring your encouraging your other siblings, your younger brothers and sisters to do something good. You're also doing good, you're giving, you are being a good example to your brothers and sisters and your parents will be so proud of you to see what you're doing. So this is exactly how we should visualize ourselves here. You are the two parents, your two par the, all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas as your parents and all sentient beings including your parents as to like your small children and you are also very young and into this path and then you try your best to invoke the Bodhicitta and inspire all other sentient beings as your younger siblings to follow this path to do good 
that they be free from suffering and that they embrace their maximum happiness. And all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas, they see, feel so proud. This is what we should be doing here. The Buddhist Bodhisattvas, they're watching us, what are you doing? And each one of us, like the eldest of the child, make this commitment, may I become Buddha for the better of all the dear mother sentient beings. And all sentient beings join you in this Bodhicitta practice. Okay, with this in mind, we will recite the following verses. <clears throat> and to his great compassion, you taught the Immaculate Dharma to dispel all perverted views. To you, the Buddha Gautama, I be homage. And to his great compassion, you taught the Immaculate Dharma to dispel all perverted views. To you, the Buddha Gautama, I be homage. And to his great compassion, you taught the Immaculate Dharma to dispel all perverted views. To you, the Buddha Gautama, I be homage. Sangye Juda Zogi Chonam Na Chanju Bandu Dane Yazu Che Dagi Chin Sangye Be Sonam Gi Tolo Benjir Sangye Nubare Shoy Sangye Juda Zogi Chonam Na Chanju Bandu Dane Yazu Che Dagi Chin Sangye Be Sonam Gi Tolo Benjir Sangye Nubare Shoy Sangye Juda I go for refuge and turn my light to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By my accumulations through practice, giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge and turn my light into the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By my accumulations through practice, of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge and turn my light into the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By my accumulations through practice, of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. And dependent on origination, there is no ceasing nor rising no annihilation, no permanence, no coming, no going, no sickness. Eh, Kinsella. Uh, page, page four. <clears throat> okay, is there anybody who depends on English? Anna Sophie? Page four. Yes. <laughs> Page four in English. Yes, this four. Oh, yeah, good. I go for refuge and turn my light into the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, by my accumulation through so practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge and turn my light into the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, by my accumulation through so practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge and turn my light into the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, by my accumulation through so practice of giving and so forth, May I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. And dependent origination, there is no ceasing, no arising, no annihilation, no permanence, no coming, no going, no separateness, and no sameness. I prostrate to the consummate Buddha, the supreme of all teachers, the one who taught this peace, which is afraid of elaborations. I prostrate to the mothers of the hearers, the bodhisattvas, and the Buddhas, who through the knowledge of all lead hearers, seeking pacification and complete peace, who through the knowledge of paths, goes those who migrate us to achieve the aims of the world, and who through 
the possession of omniscient self the doer is expert of a variety of teachings. The one who has transformed into the reliable guide, motivated by altruism to benefit sentient beings. The teachers who are then protected to you are make prostrations. The one who has eliminated the web of conceptualizations and is endowed with the divine bodies of the vast and the profound, who eternally shines for the forever noble life rays to you, the Buddha, make prostrations. Inspired by wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I chanted the mother full awakening for the benefit of sentient beings. Okay, we'll recite the mantra together. Uh, the many of you know how to recite it. Yeah, deep with the melody. And there's those who do not know, listen to us and join us. <clears throat> Om Yadarama Hetu Prabhavan Hetum Tesham Tathagato Hyavatat Desham Chayo Niroda Evam Bhati Mahashramana Yeswaha Om Yadarama Hetu Prabhavan Hetum Tesham Tathagato Yavatat Desham Chayo Niroda Evam Vati Mahashramana Yeswaha Om Yadarama Hetu Prabhavan Hetum Tesham Tathagato Yavatat Desham Chayo Niroda Evam Vati Mahashramana Yeswaha Okay, in fact, uh, the, to know this mantra is very important. Uh, know this mantra and uh, the, usually people get the impression, get a feeling that the to say mantra means it'll perform, it'll have some medical power, medical effect. But this is not the case. Don't expect like this. This mantra, if you read the meaning, it's just like a mirror for us. Mirror. It is not to give a medical. It is a mirror to us. It simply says that, here in the meaning, it says all phenomena arise from causes. The happiness that you are seeking, the miseries which we shun, they don't arise randomly, they arise from the causes. And the, cause, the cessation of causes, as well as taught by the great seer, means that the, how to stop these negative causes, give rise to miseries. So how to stop this is taught by the Buddha. So the, you have to know what the Buddha taught, how to stop these miseries, how to stop the causes of miseries. So, by knowing the meaning, as you recite the meaning, as we recite the mantra, the meanings must be reflected in mind. And of course, in the course of the, the teaching on the eight verse mind training and the Mahamudra, I'm going to explain this meaning. This is so important. And they say, whether you understand Mahamudra or not, it doesn't matter. If you know the meaning of this, the Buddha would be most happy. Meaning of this, and then, Say always remind ourselves whenever you are on the verge to feel attached to, angry, frustrated, so forth, and then this mantra must come to your mind, okay, to save you. So this is so as long as you keep harboring wrong thoughts in your mind, ang thoughts of anger, agitation, frustration on others, uh, no matter how much mantra we recite. There's no point. So, this mantra should be like a shield for you, protection for you, in ways that is a reminder that I should, I should not engage in negativities. Yes, we are bound to do you know, engage negative thoughts. We are so habituated in the negative thoughts, but then this mantra is now given to us as a shield by the Buddha. But that does not have any, you know, uh, the solid presence to you. But the greatest solid presence is this shield how to stop from the negativities and how to engage in the virtues. So this mantra should be seen as a mirror to see where is wrong within you 
and as a shield to protect you from engaging in negativities. So this is how we have to use this mantra. And of course, be, because that we are still expecting more people to join the class, the, I'll have to explain this later on the, when others also join us. Okay, well, let's recite the meaning of the mantra together. All phenomena arise from causes. The causes are taught by the Tathagata. The cessation of causes as well as taught by the grace here. Yeah. Profound, peaceful, elaboration free, clear light and non-composite. Such is the nectar that Dharma I have discovered. Finding no one who can fathom this teaching, in silence I return to the words. Pure utterance, thought and expression is the professional wisdom, which is unborn, unceased and has the nature of space. It is the object of apprehension of self-realized wisdom. To you, the mother of the Buddhas, of the three times, I be obeisance. All composite things are impermanent. All contaminated things are the nature of suffering. All phenomena are the nature of emptiness and selflessness, transcending sorrows, peace. The Guru is the Buddha, the Guru is the Dharma, likewise the Guru is the Sangha, the Guru is the source of everything wholesome. I go for refuge to the Guru. By the sound of the vibrant drum of Dharma, you liberate all beings with miseries. I beseech you to kindly remain and give teachings until the end of the expanse of billions of eons. The Buddha does not watch the negative videos of beings, nor does he remove their miseries by his hands. His spiritual realizations are not transferred to them. It is by teaching the truth of suchness that the beings are liberated. With folded hands, I beseech the Buddhas of four directions to shine the light of Dharma for all bewildered miseries gloom. If you are attached to this life, you are not a spiritual practitioner. If you are attached to samsara, you have no renunciation. If you are attached to your own self-interest, you have no bodhicitta. If there is grasping, you do not have the view. Okay, um, let's turn to page 14, the praise to Shakyamuni Buddha. Page, page 14 in English. Are oh, you have it? You don't have it. Ah. Oh, we have, we don't have. <laughs> okay, so everybody has it? Okay, everybody has? Okay. Uh, Which page? English is page 14. French, which page? Okay. Okay. I praise to Shagam Buddha. As we recite this again, it is don't expect some blessings coming to you. The real blessing is reflecting on the qualities the qualities of the Buddha indicated and see if you have these qualities within you some of these qualities if you do have rejoice feel happy rejoice okay these are the qualities through which someone becomes enlightened so I have a part of these qualities I will need to um, decode them further develop them further this one and if you don't have these qualities, don't worry. Each one of us, we have the seeds of these qualities within us, put the nature within us. So, oh, look, these are the qualities indicated there of the Buddha. So, I should also, um, I should also make these the the seeds of the these qualities to awaken. So, we learn from the Buddha is enumerated as qualities of the Buddha. So this is the, the the purpose for us to recite this, not to seek some external blessings. 
to the founder, the entire transcendent destroyer, the one going beyond, the four destroyer, completely perfected, full of awakened being, perfect in knowledge and good, good conduct, Sugada, know to the world, supreme God of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you, the completely and fully awakened one, the entire transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subdued from the Shakya clan. Uh, I prostrate and make offerings and go for refuge. When all supreme amongst humans, you are born on this earth, you pace out seven strides, then set up supreme in this world. To you who are wise, then I prostrate. With pure bodies, form supremely pure, wisdom ocean like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, who is the best lord to your prostrate? With the supreme signs, face like a spotless moon, color like gold to your prostrate, dusty like you, the three worlds are not, incomparable wise one to your prostrate, the Savior having great compassion, the Founder having all understanding, the field of merit with quality is like a vast ocean, to you the Tathagata I prostrate, the purity that frees one from attachment, the virtue that frees one from the lower realms, the one part, the sublime pure reality to the Dhamma that pacifies I prostrate, those who are liberated and also show the path to liberation, the holy field qualified with realizations, who are devoted to the moral precepts, to you the Sangha I prostrate, do not commit any Known virtuous actions, perform only perfect virtuous actions, subdue your mind thoroughly. This is a teaching of the Buddha. A star, a visual aberration, a flame of lamb, an illusion, a drop of dew or a bubble, a dream, a flash of lightning, a cloud, such condition things as such. Through this merits may sentient beings attain the rank of all seeing, subdue the four faults, aim but delivered from themselves ocean, perturbed by the ways of aging, sickness, and death. Okay, we have Heart Sutra. Heart Sutra in English, page 29. <coughs> oh. Okay. Page 29. Yeah. Yes, we recite Har Sutra. There are three things we need to remember. One is, um, what is the question asked by Shariputra to Aravalokiteshvara? The question asks is, how should we, as somebody who aspires to become enlightened, to become Buddha, how should we practice the perfection of wisdom? How should we practice the wisdom of emptiness? Then the response is given by Aravalokiteshvara in great detail. What should we do? The second point not to miss is the response given by Aravalokiteshvara. So the Aravalokiteshvara explained how we should practice wisdom and emptiness starting from the self. Emptiness of the self, emptiness of five figure gates, emptiness of the, the twelve sources, eighteen elements, four noble truths, the twelve things of dependent origin and so forth. And then the in great detail explained, then the third point what if you practice the professional wisdom as indicated by Arvalukteshvara? So the benefit is indicated that your fears will be dissolved, your happiness will expand. So this is how all the Buddhas of the three times they entered. This is only gateway through which the beings can become enlightened. So this is the third point, not a miss as we recite the House Sutra. Okay, with this mind, let's recite it. And ima and imagine that this Heart Sutra, by the way, how many of you have been to Vulture's Peak? Vulture's Peak in India. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so if you have been there, just imagine that you are there in the Vulture's Peak, where the Buddha Shakyamuni was presiding, Arav Lutishvara, Arav the Shariputra, and those who have not been there, just visualize that, okay, so this was actually what happened in India 2,500 2, years ago. And imagine that you're also there in the world to speak, although you, cannot, you may not be able to visualize what it is like, don't worry. Just visualize that you are in front of Buddha Shakyamuni, Arav Lutishvara, Arav the Arav the Shariputra. Okay. <clears throat> and imagine that all beings are surrounded you, they surround you and you are inspiring everyone to be in following this Sutra. 
I proceed to the Ari Chulu Gym. That's today he had one time. The Buddha was dwelling on the mass of Vajra's mountain in Rajgriha, together with the great community of monks and the great community of Bodhisattvas. At that time, the Buddha was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound illumination. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Aravidogiteshvara, looked upon the very practice of the profound illumination of wisdom and beheld those five faculty gates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of the Buddha, the Venerable Shari Putra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aravidogiteshvara, how should any child of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound professional wisdom train? He said that and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aravidogiteshvara said this to the Venerable Shari Putra, Shari Putra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound professional wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly, beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form, form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, composite factors, and consciousness empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are empty, without characteristic, unproduced, unseen, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no composite factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form. Form, no sound, no smell, no taste, no object to touch, and no phenomena. There is no eye element, and so on, up to and include no mind element, and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, up to and including no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation path, there is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no known attainment. Shari Buddha, therefore, because there is no attainment, Bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without observation and thus without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of Nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifest a complete awakening to answer a possible perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the professional wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequal, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as truth since it is not false. The mother of the professional wisdom is declared Yatha Om Gade Gade Bara Gade Bara Sam Gade Bodhi Swaha. Shari Putra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva should train in the profound professional wisdom like that. Then the Buddha rose from the concentration and commanded the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aravalukiteshvara saying well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice the profound professional wisdom just as you have indicated, even the Tata others rejoice. The Buddha having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharitvati Putra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Aravaluteshvara, who surrounded the entirety along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Buddha. Okay, this mantra will recite seven times. Harsal Mantra. And again, same thing. Some of you already know how to recite this with a tune. Those who do not know, listen to us and join us. <coughs> Um, and the, in S, in short, the meaning of the matter is that I should not remain in this the defiled state. I should not remain in the state of suffering. I should go from the state of suffering to the state of ultimate happiness, the state of fear to the state of fearlessness. So, and this is something which can happen not overnight. It happens. It should happen in time. In five steps, Gade Gade Para Gade Para Samgade Bodhisattva. Hopefully, we'll get time to explain this, the what the five steps are, and so forth in the course of this the the few days teaching. <coughs> and imagine that you are some the, the Buddhist Akhamani, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, then the Aryabhuktishvara, Shariputra, and all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas in front of there. And you are two parents, and all sentient beings are joining you in this. I say the making this commitment that I will, the progress. I will keep progressing. I will keep progressing in the sense of removing my mental dirts, mental dirts, and to make this Buddha nature more and more awakened. <clears throat> Gade Gade Bara Gade Bara Sangha De Bodhiswatiyata Om Gade 
गते पारगते पारसंगते बोधिस्वाहत्यता ओम गते गते संगदे बोधिस्वाहत्यता ओम गते गते पारगते पारसंगदे बोधिस्वाहत्यता ॐ गते गते पारगते पारसंगते बोधिस्वाहत्यता ॐ गते गते पारगते संगदे बोधिस्वाहत्यता ओम गते गते पारगते पारसंगदे बोधिस्वाहत्यता The teachings of the truth from Jews possessing the power of truth. May in and outer hindrance be transformed, may they be dispelled, may they be non existent, may they be pacified, may all negative forces opposed to the Dharma be completely pacified, may the host of 80,000 obstacles be pacified, may we be separated from problems and conditions harmful to the Dharma, may all enjoyments be in accord with the Dharma, may all species and perfect happiness pervade this place now. Okay, I uh, will recite the and the seven in um, push up, seven in practice, page thirty seven in English. Page thirty seven in English. You're right. Okay. <coughs> I bow down to the youthful Arya Majushri. You, the Buddha, is the lions amongst humans. Gone to freedom in the present, past, and future. In the worlds of ten directions. To all of you, with body, speech, and sincere mind, I bow down. With the energy of aspiration for the Bodhisattva way. With a sense of deep respect, and with as many bodies as atoms of the world. To you, all you Buddhas visualize this real, I bow down. And on Every particle of Buddha's numberless is atoms, each time is a host of Bodhisattvas. And I'm confident the sphere of all phenomena is entirely filled with Buddhas in this way, with infinite with oceans of praise for you and oceans of sound from the aspects of my voice. I sing the breathtaking excellence of Buddhas and I celebrate all of you sagadas. Beautiful flowers and regal garlands, sweet music is sent to oils and parasols, sparkling lights and sublime incense. I refer to you, the victorious ones of Buddhas. Fine dress and fragrant perfume, sandalwood powder, heaped high mount mirror, all wondrous offerings in spectacular array offered to victorious ones. But transcendent offerings, peerless and vast, with profound admiration for all the Buddhas, with strength of conviction and the Bodhisattva way, I offer and bow down to all the Buddha victorious ones. Every harmful action I have done with my body, speech and mind, overwhelmed by attachment, anger and confusion, all these are openly laid bare before you. I lift my heart and rejoice in all the merit of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in ten directions. Of solitary realizers here are still training in those beyond, and of all ordinary beings. You who are the bright lights of worlds in ten directions, who attained a Buddha's omniscience through the stages of awakening, all you who are my guides, please turn the supreme will of Dharma. With the palms together, I earnestly request you who may actualize prayer nirvana, please stay with us for eons, as numberless as atoms of the world, for the happiness and well-being of all wondrous and samsara. Whatever light, slight merit I may have 
accumulated by making prostration, sufferings, and confessing, rejoicing, requesting that the Buddha stay and teach, and now dedicate all this for the full awakening of all beings. Okay, much offering to all the Buddhists and Bodhisattvas. <clears throat> you have it? Mandal offering. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Um, first, we'll say the English, and then the Tibetan. I'll do with the uh, the melody together. So the idea is that what good things that we have in this universe, we offer these to all Buddhist Bodhisattvas. Yeah. This ground are known to be perfumed. Strewn with flowers are drawn with Mount Meru, with the four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this is a Buddha filled and offer it. No all sentient beings enjoy this pure land. Oh, The next two verses are there. Good. May I be blessed that my mind is directed towards the Dharma. May I be blessed that my Dharma practices on the proper path. May I be blessed that the path is free of flaws. May I be blessed that the flaws are seen in the light of exalted wisdom. Becoming utterly frustrated with the ignorance that grasps it to existence, please bless me with a generate genuine renunciation, seeing all aspects of samsara as vicious and repulsive. Please bless me that my mind is removed flows with the pre- precious bodhicitta that, that cherishes others more than myself. Please bless me to have an immaculate experience of the wisdom of emptiness that does not see even an atom of intrinsic reality, on the basis of understanding how things come into being by dependent origination through mere conditioning. <laughs> Please bless it me that my mind stream overflows with the precious wisdom of non duality to bliss and emptiness. Edam Guru Ranam and Lavam Nirate Amen. Okay. At the next uh, foundation of all good qualities, the next page. And this is like the, the path, roadway to Buddhahood. We have. Okay, and uh, this a foundation of all good qualities, this is extremely, extremely important. This is so important. And this is the complete road to enlightenment. From where we are to the Buddhahood. Everything is in great detail explained by Lama Tsongkhapa in just 14 verses. Okay. The foundation of all good qualities is the kind of the perfect pure guru. Correct devotion to him is the root of the path. By clearly seeing this and applying great effort, please bless me to rely upon with great respect. Understanding that the precious freedom of this rebirth is found only once, is greatly meaningful and is difficult to find again. Please bless me to generate the mind that unceasingly day and night takes its essence. This life is as impermanent as a water bubble. Remember how quickly it decays and death comes. 
after they are just taking a shadow follow us the body, results of versions non versions come and follow. Finding firm definite conviction in this, please bless me always to be careful to abandon even the slightest negativity and accomplish all versions days. Some sadic splendors are unsatisfying and unreliable, seeking them is a draw to all suffering. Recognizing these shortcomings, please bless me to generate a strong wish for the bliss of liberation. Let by this pure thought, mindfulness and alertness in great question arise. The root of the teaching is keeping the breath of vows. Please bless me to accomplish this essential practice. Just as I have fallen into the sea of samsara, so for all mother my creature beings, please bless me to receive this training in supreme bodhicitta and bear the responsibility of freeing my greater beings. Even if I have developed bodhicitta but I don't practice a three times morality, I will not achieve enlightenment. With my clear recognition of this, please bless me to practice the bodhisattva vows with great energy. Once I have pacified distractions to wrong objects and correctly analyze the meaning of reality, please bless me to de- generate quickly within my mind stream the unified path of karma by an special insight. Having become a pure vessel by training this original path, please bless me to enter the holy gateway of the fortunate ones, the supreme version of vehicle. At that time, the basis of accomplishing the two attainments is keeping pure vows and samaya. As I have become firmly convinced of this, Please bless me to protect these vows and pledge to my life. Then I will realize the importance of the two stages, the essence of Vajrayana, by practicing with great energy, never giving up the four sessions. Please bless me to realize the teachings of the Holy Guru. Like that, may the gurus who show the noble path and especially friends who practice it with all lives. Please bless me to pacify completely all our inner hindrances. In all my lives, never separated from perfect gurus, may I enjoy the magnificent Dharma by completing the qualities of stages and the paths, may I attain the state of Vajratara. Next, we'll recite this Mikzama Mantra. Uh, first, we'll say the in English or in French, followed by in Tibetan. Two versions. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. You are a Lukateshvara, great pressure of non-referential compassion. In Manjushri, martial flawless wisdom, as well as Vajrapani, destroyed holes of demons without exception. Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the stage of land of snows, loves on top of your feet and make prostrations. We can all will say this in um, the Tibetan. When we say this in Tibetan with the melody, we skip the third line. It doesn't mean that third line is not to be included. So it's just to suit the melody. The third line is omitted. But the meaning of the third line is intact through the a combination of the first and second. Okay, we'll say this together uh, three times. And let's invoke the Lama Tsongkhapa on the whose tradition is extremely relevant today in the with the minds of the uh, the educated modern educated uh, people who are more analytical. This is so precious. <clears throat> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Okay, uh, now we do uh, three things. One is the uh, quick meditation, single point of meditation. Uh, for the single point of meditation, um, I'm sure that there are many of you who have already been used to do meditations. Um, it's going to be, say, the uh, a very simple Singapore medi breathing meditation. And uh, the, those who sit in the chairs, just feel comfortable to sit in the chair, that's fine. And uh, the, the most important thing is four points to keep in mind. Number one is the body posture. Number two is what you're going to meditate on. Number three is identifying the errors of meditation. Number four is applying the remedies to overcome the errors. Four points. So for the body posture, uh, the sitting cross-legged would be very helpful. But if you have knee problem, baggy problem, don't force yourself. Sit in the most comfortable way, chairs. The only thing is that those who do not have backing problem uh, is advised not to lean against the support. Don't lean against the support. That's the most important thing. Just keep your body upright. I say the moment, say people who do the meditation for say extended period of time or let's say that who do meditation regularly, they could feel this effect very instantly. The moment you lean against the support, instantly your mind Will become relax, more relax, relax meaning in not in a good sense, like will lose the rigor, rigor will disappear. So to keep the body upright is very important. Then the next is your eyes not close, eyes four or five degrees cast down, and there are meditations where on the say every say there's what is known as the the meditation in dark. That's it. These are very different meditations. Otherwise, the generally speaking, um, learn how to do med the meditation with eyes open, and um, that the um, over time, when you become really good in meditation, which means that you become really uh, like a proficient, proficiency attaining proficiency in meditation, then sometimes you do meditation with eyes closed. Lying down, sitting up, that's fine. But the beginners, we can't expect to do these things. And if you do that, initially you feel that, but in the eyes close, you feel that the what you're going to focus on is more clear. But in the long run, it hampers your growth. So therefore, it's advice, even though it is difficult, challenging at the at the beginning, with your eyes open. But this is how we have to do. But eyes fortified is cast down and just ignore. And then the, the tip of the tongue should touch the upper palate to avoid the excessive accumulation of saliva in the mouth. Because the, with the saliva, it can be very disturbing to meditation. But it doesn't mean that the saliva will not be formed, it will minimize. Okay, breathe normally. Don't chase the, don't follow, don't chase after the breath forcefully don't control the breath just let it flow very naturally okay and then your right hand or your left hand okay this is what everybody knows and the tips of the thumbs joining forming a triangle place the two hands on your laps a lab in your lap in restful state and breathe normally and while your backbone is upright make sure that your body is 
flexible, it's not rigid. This is so important. Oftentimes, unknowingly, unintentionally, you are, while you set up right, then your body tends to become rigid. That is not good. In few days' time, you will have the muscle pains. Okay. So this is the body posture, and uh, then the the next one is the um, the focal point. You there are two things happening. One is just count the breath. And there are so many versions of the focal points of the breath. Just count the breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, breath out, just count the breath. You don't do the full of the breath, like, okay, now the breath has gone through my right nostril, through a central channel down, forget all these things. And when you become good at the meditation, what we do now, later on, if you want to do this, like the breath, this is known as the Lungrukutu, where you breathe in through your right nostril, goes on through this, the through your right channel, then entering through from the bottom, entering through the central channel, coming out. So there is this technique there. Just keep this aside for the, keep this for the time being, and just count your breath. Breath in, breath out. Cycle one, and breath in, breath out. Cycle two. This one thing. And initially, all of us can try the two things later on if you feel that the uh, you can focus on both then just focus on one side the second part is say while counting your breath also visualize a tiny dot a tiny white dot like this bead instead of black a white dot with nose and upper lip like 2 mm in diameter but just a white honey dot there. So this is multitasking. Focus your mind on the tiny dot and count the breath. These two things should happen together. Initially, it's going to be challenging. Don't say that I cannot do it in two or three days' time. Practice it for about a week. And if you feel that, okay, two things not possible. After consultation with your, let's say, the other people, if you feel that, okay, I cannot do it, do on it one either count with breath or the visualize on white i'll go one go for one okay otherwise uh, this is a practice that we do the two things happening together okay this is your body posture the focal point number three um okay um, when we discuss on this two things happening together some of you might have questions that but our mind works one at a time mind doesn't cannot do two things together so this is the in a very cursory form this is what we explain in a very cursory form but for example let's say that okay i'm doing two things the i'm petting myself and petting the table also two things but if you analyze deeply then there's a nuance explanation there it's actually in deep in fine explanation we see that two things cannot happen together but in the vernacular conventional sense, yes, two things happen. We talk about multitasking. Okay, on that level. Then the uh, the errors of meditation. Point number three. Errors of meditation, broadly speaking, two. One is mental laxity, and the other one is mental excitement. Mental laxity is the inactivity of the mind. When a mind becomes too inactive and almost going to be slipping, sinking. This is one error of the meditation, and the other one is the overactivity of the mind, known as the mental excitement. So, should any of these two things happen, we must learn how to stop that. Okay, these two are the major things. Then, in your own meditation, those of us who are actually doing the meditation on a daily basis, you might come across very strange experiences, very nuanced, sometimes like excitement and laxity they're coming together we can you know have these experiences when these things happen if you don't know how to tell this you must report to your teachers okay for those people who are more long-term meditators you will have these experiences so this must be discussed with your respective teachers then finally how to overcome these errors when you do have these errors what should you do you do go for number four 
applying the remedies to overcome the errors. And the remedies, there are two. Introspection and mindfulness. This is a very generic explanation. But for the, the people with the very specific issues, you have to consult your teachers. So, how to apply this, the, the remedies to a very specific problems. So, generally speaking, and these are the two remedies. The introspection and mindfulness. Introspection is to keep an eye on your own mind to see what mind is doing, whether mind is meditating or mind is sleeping or mind is the distracted. And should you see that your mind is sleeping or distracted, then apply the mindfulness. Mindfulness is like the rope to bring the mind back to the intended object of meditation. Okay, these are the four points to keep in mind. Ready? Five minutes. <coughs>
Okay, thank you. <coughs> uh, next is the renunciation. For that matter, we do the four seals. And um, the four generating renunciation, there is the whole Lamrim teaching there. And all this Lamrim teaching, you see that they all go back. They are all traceable to the four seals of the Buddhist teachings. So we do directly on the basis of four seals. And those those of us who are into more into Lamrim, what, what we suggest is that you follow the Lamrim tradition and meanwhile see how to integrate this, how to see this, correlate this to the four seals. This is so important. Okay. Eventually, say the, all these, what we do, must be traceable back to the original Buddha's teachings. Okay. So this is going to be more like a guided meditation. It's going to be very simple. I don't want to make it too detailed, very uh, simple. Uh, just try to follow the instructions and uh, your job our job is to invoke the respective experiences to the best we can. And uh, the, but we don't try to correlate what I'm saying now and what I've learned before. Don't try to correlate the two and you'll miss the invoking your experience. So here the most important thing is invoke the experience. That's more important. You want to correlate, you can correlate later on, not now. So this, let us take this opportunity to invoke the spirit of the okay finally this is what life is and the meaning with the we have to look for a greater purpose greater meaning of life and what's greater meaning of life is to get away from all the fears of life miseries by getting away from all the causes of miseries so this is what we need to know then the second part is the bodhicitta will be followed by bodhicitta for the matter not only that i be free from the miseries and the fears of life but to ex embrace others let others also be free from suffering for that matter i must become buddha for the beautiful sentient beings this is number two and the wisdom of emptiness how to do that is by actually embracing the remedy that is the wisdom of emptiness okay um yes <coughs> Uh, renunciation. renunciation meaning to renunciation is to renounce your miseries to renounce your miseries we need to know how to renounce the causes of the miseries as we recited uh, the the mantra of the essence of dependent origination ye dharma hetu prabhava all these miseries they arise from the causes and these the miseries but identifying the cause of the miseries, we see that there are four misconceptions which the Buddha identified. The first, viewing impermanent phenomena as permanent, this misconception. So this impermanence is of two kinds, cross and subtle. It's so important for us to remember, to, mind, to be mindful of the cross impermanence. All the people that we met in our life 10 years ago, 20 years ago, many of them, either they left the world or they are not to be seen around you. The same permanent. And the, I say, beautiful, beautiful, your beautiful youth, today is all gone. And 200 years ago, in this world, in France, everywhere in the world, what we're doing to here, your age, like those in 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever age you are in now, 200 years ago, they were likewise the same people with the same age, with their parents, with their children, having so much expectation from the children, and so forth. Today, where are those people? They're all gone. And this reality, this is what the Buddha referred to as the all composite things impermanent. And this reality of impermanence is of reality. This is, there are three kinds impermanence where the continuum of the object, for example, like 2021, 20, 20, uh, 20, whether we like it or not, it 
stopped already. Compa the continuum of the object terminates invariably. Number two, where impermanent phenomena, where the continuum never stops. For example, the self, I, my mind, time. The continuum never stops. There's the third category, impermanent phenomena, the continuum of which only if you put effort it will come to an end. Without putting effort, they will never come to an end automatically. For example, your suffering, your self grasping ignorance, your self centered attitude, they will never stop on their own till we put effort. This is just the third category of impermanence. Yet, all these impermanent phenomena, whether they belong to the first category, second category, third category, all share one thing in common that is within within each of them is constituted the subtle impermanence momentariness subtle, the momentariness instantaneous the change this is what defines impermanent phenomena so um, the as a a tree which took 10 years to grow to a 10 feet 10 feet tall um, if it's not that for the last nine years it remained as a seed and suddenly it grew very tall but every year is growing one one foot each and every month is growing one one inch and every hour every day it grows every hour it grows every month every minute second millisecond nanosecond so if this is how, although we look at the tree, we see the tree is so static, elegant, not moving. In actuality, moment by moment, it is moving. Like was our body, our mind, the world around us, your parents, your children. Everyone is moving at that base. Momentariness is there. So if you really meditate on this, for sure you will have a sense of fear to see how the composite phenomena they move so fast so when they move so fast what's your reaction why the fear comes imagine that you are thrown into a very fast moving train what is your reaction so much of fear faster the train moves more the fear you have why because you don't know where this train is taking you the next question who decides where this train is taking you where where this train is going who decides that driver decides likewise in our mind in 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 our case our mind decides our mind is like the the driver which moves your body and mind so fast and this mind or this driver if that is under the dictate under the sway of the terrorists it no doubt will take you to a slaughterhouse if you are if you the driver is under the dictate of your mother and your dad no doubt will take you to a the picnic spot but in our case unfortunately a mind which is the driver is under the dictate of the the two contaminations two demons a self-grasping ignorance and self-centered attitude as long as our mind is under the the this world these two demons don't expect us to to be taken to, to pick this spot, but no doubt, invariably, will be taken to the slaughterhouse of the miseries. More and more miseries in the future. Very scary. This is what the Buddha taught as the second seal. If all the all contaminated things are of suffering nature, where things are under the sweat of contaminations, the worst of which are the self grasping ignorance, self centered attitude, the miseries will follow. What kind of miseries? It's so important for us to reflect on miseries, the sickness, aging, death, tension, depression, anxiety, anguish, and so forth. And to be very honest, although we go to parties, celebrations, birthday parties, and so forth, anniversaries, and so forth, but in actuality, one one moment of such a misery is good enough to nullify all the past wonders of your merriments, festivities, birthday parties and so forth. One moment is good enough to nullify all the past wonders. For the loss of near and dear ones, 
the soul of somebody who you feel so affectionate, so attached to, the whole life becomes so gloomy and shattered. This meaning of all contaminated things and stuff in nature is so, so painful to think of that. Yes, that's very true. That's extremely true how many people died to COVID-19. Even I personally, I remember a number of extremely good friends lost to this COVID-19. So painful to think of these. When will these pains start? 2020, 2020, 2021 stopped already. But when will these pains stop? They will never stop unless until we exert effort to stop these. This belongs to the third category of suffering, third category of impermanent phenomena. So what kind of, the, what kind of effort is required? And the wisdom is the, given that all these miseries are rooted to contamination, which of which is self grasping ignorance. This ignorance has to be eradicated. Only then the miseries will come to an end. Till that point, till that happens, nothing will work. So, how to get rid of self grasping ignorance? Ignorance, by the very definition, is a mind who is apprehended, who, which distorts the reality. And to remove this ignorance, which is like a darkness, in dark you don't see the reality. With ignorance you don't see the reality. So how to get rid of darkness? It is only through introducing light in a similar fashion. It is only through introducing the light of the wisdom that the darkness of ignorance can be eradicated. So what kind of wisdom? Wisdom by the very definition is a discerning mind whose apprehension of the reality tells whose apprehension of the object tells by the reality. What is reality? The reality is what the Buddha taught as the third seal. Everything is the nature of emptiness, selflessness. Everything is like a dream. There's nothing really existing objectively. Everything is like a dream. How can you know that everything is like a dream? Okay, let's quickly meditate on emptiness. All this is going to be very cursory, very gross level of emptiness here. Over time, during the passage of the next few days, we will do more studies on emptiness. But here we're going to do it very um, briefly. <coughs> Try to follow the instructions, even though you may get lost, it doesn't matter. Just try your best to follow the instructions. Okay, what are you doing? I'm meditating. What is your body doing? I'm body is in a meditative state. Okay, how does this self appear to you? Like a dream, your mind is tr that your mind is tr creating this self? Or the self is so objectified, so solidified there from the object. Of course, it's so solidified from the object. This is the self grasping ignorance, viewing the self, believing that the self exists also object real there. This is the ignorance. How do you know that this ignorance? Remember what Arendigarjuna said if the mirage were to be water, why not those truths but the mirage see water? If this self were to exist objectively, why don't we see the self as we go closer to its object? Okay, now let us go closer to its object to see if the self truly exists as object real. Going closer, we see that it's just uh, the thin layer of the skin, which is not the self. Anything which is not the self, just ignore this. You are looking for the intrinsic self. You are looking for the, the objective self. Whatever is not the self, just ignore. Thin layers of skin is not self. Behind that, the fatty tissues. Behind that, the cartilages, the muscles, and the bone, the whole skeleton, the heart, the lungs, pancreas, the stomach, the gallbladder. None of these solid parts constitute the self. These solid parts constitute what is known as the element of earth. Element of earth is not the self. Yes, that's for sure. Element of water, four liters of four liters of blood that your heart pumps in and out through the heart to different parts of the body. Of course, that which comes the element of water, even that is also not the self. Element of fire, the body heat, two thousand joules of energy that our body has. Of course, that is not the self. Element of air. 
4.6 liters of air that we, that we breathe in and out through your lungs. Of course, that is not me. And the space. 99.9% .9 of our body is just vacuum. Yet, I'm not a space, I'm a solid person. Space vacuum in nature. What is left now? Now only the consciousness is left, my mind is left. Um, even this con element of consciousness is also not me. People can see me from distance, they can also see my mind. Also that I'm a male, I'm a female. So the maleness or the femaleness, the gender is posited on the basis of the body, not the mind. So this mind is not self. Okay, now ignore all these six elements. Just finding that none of these six elements is intrinsically the self, objective to be identified as self. Okay, it may the self if it does exist objectively, then remove all the six elements to see if it exists as different from the six elements. Remove the six elements, nothing's found there as a self different from the egle the six elements. Nothing should be found as intrinsically different from the six elements. Okay, where is this self now from the object? From the object, there's nothing to be identified as a self. Still, this experience of the non affirming negative. Non affirming negative, where it's just a mere absence of the self to be intrinsically real. Still, this self simply disappears as intrinsically real. Still, in this experience for a while. Yeah, that's amazing that you, yes, this self is not to identify it as solid real. But what's the benefit? Yes, just as this self disappears in the eyes of the wisdom of emptiness, all phenomena including sickness, aging, death, tension, depression, all the undesirable sorrows will all dissolve in the eyes of the wisdom of emptiness. This is what the Buddha indicated as transcending sorrow is absolute peace. This is a time when experienced absolute peace with total fearlessness. No fear. All misery is stopped. All misery is dissolved in the experience of this emptiness. This is the ultimate experience of Nirvana. And this aspiration aspiration that in the experience of emptiness all this misery is dissolved. That desire to experience this emptiness where all misery is dissolved is the ultimate understanding of renunciation, the most refined understanding of renunciation. Still, this experience of renunciation may experience this emptiness where all my misery is dissolved. Okay, good. Uh, we'll take a few seconds uh, break before we move to the bodhicitta. So, what is happening today here is because there's a cultural center here, and the you see, in this, there are so many teachers came to give teachings, and uh, Guru Bhatma Samava is there just there, and the Beautiful stupas here, and all the images of Buddhist Bodhisattvas here. The the place is so blessed. So this is where the environment is created, and then we are putting an effort in this more sacred environment. You are invoking the spirit of the Bodhicitta, wisdom of emptiness. This is the meaning of the blessing. So where they are like, say, the twenty people, thirty people. So when 30 moments of bodhicitta are generated, this is what, bless, what blesses the whole environment. And, uh, the, and then future people, they come, they could feel this vibration. This means the blessing. Okay, ready for the bodhicitta? For the bodhicitta, what we do is that in group, if it is specialized on the study, refreshment management bodhicitta, then we have to take the follow the two methods but given that the we are the same uh, for the sake of doing the consecration we will do it very quickly with the help of the four immeasurables 
and particularly I'm going to focus on the first two immeasurables immeasurable loving kindness and immeasurable compassion okay ready <clears throat> again the same thing experiences must be involved this is so important first immeasurable loving kindness how good would it be that all my dear mother sentient beings are endowed with happiness and the causes of happiness the cause of happiness primarily consisting of the wisdom of emptiness and the unconditional bodhicitta may all my dear mother sentient beings be endowed with happiness and the causes of happiness the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, witnessing that you make such a courageous commitment, they are intensely happy and proud of you. This pride and happiness invoke the compression of mission minds to sense that nectar is very soothing lights to assume the ultimate and human beings. They may attach the lights and nectars with the bodies beings yours, instilled in all happiness and the causes of happiness within yourself and all ultimate and human beings. And you're witnessing that such a miracle is happening towards all the demons and human beings. You're intensely happy. Take three deep breaths. Sound with relief. immeasurable compassion how good would it be that all my dear medicine beings are freed from suffering and the causes of suffering the cause of suffering primarily self-grasping ignorance and self-centered attitude may all my dear medicine beings be freed from suffering and the cause of suffering I'll take the responsibility that all the demon sentient beings are freed from suffering and the cause of suffering. The Buddhas and Bodhisattvas witnessing that you make such a courageous commitment, they intensely happy and proud of you. This pride and happiness invoke the compassion of mission minds to the sense of nectars very soothing lights towards you and all demon sentient beings. The mere touch of lights and nectars with the body beings yours. Washes of all the miseries and causes of miseries from since you mixed yourself. <coughs> and you but this such a miracle is happening to us all the demon sentient beings. You are intensely happy. Take three deep breaths, sign with relief. Scoring the two immeasurables or the four immeasurables is the unconditional love towards all demons and human beings. Just abide in the experience of the unconditional love towards all the beings, imagining that you are looking at the eyes of each of the sentient beings to the extent that each one of them feels themselves as so special in your eyes. With this unconditional love, with four returns, let us make a bodhicitta commitment. I'll say the line of bodhicitta and let us all say these three times together. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings. May I become Buddha for the benefit of all my dear mother sentient beings.
our body is the most beautiful mind in the universe, the Bodhicitta. And slowly transform this mind of the Bodhicitta into spotless, clean, white moon disk, horizontally sitting on the heart. Okay, it's amazing that you made such a courageous commitment to become Buddha, to bend for all the gem of sentient beings. But how can you become a Buddha? Yes, of the Buddha nature within me. I have to activate this Buddha nature. How are I going to activate this Buddha nature? By remove all the mental defilements. How are I going to remove the mental defilements? By resorting to the ultimate remedy. What is the ultimate remedy? The wisdom of emptiness. Let us quickly invoke the wisdom of emptiness, which we meditated as a part of the four seeds of the Buddha's teachings. What are you doing? I'm meditating. How does this self appear to you? Like a dream, your mind is projecting it? Or a subject real? Of course, a subject real. This is the of grasp ignorance. Now go into six elements to see that the that this self constitutes of six elements. And the earth, the sort of part of the body. And the water, four liters of the blood. And the fire, the 2,000 joules of energy. Element of the, the air, 4.6 liters of the air. And the space, 99.99% of the body as vacuum. And the consciousness, our mind. What do you see now? I just see the six, six elements. Going towards that object. Which of six elements is to be identified as intrinsic the one with the self? None of the six elements can be identified as intrinsic the one with the self. Okay, then the self to see if it exists intrinsically different from the six elements. Remove the six elements. What do you find? Nothing is left there. Okay, now where is the self from the object? From the object itself is nowhere to be seen. Stay in this experience for a while. This is the most fearless mind in this universe. Slowly transform this mind of the wisdom of emptiness into a spotless, clean, white Vajra, vertically sitting on the moon disk of the heart. Okay, with great, that's amazing that you have the moon, which symbolizes the conventional bodhicitta, to eradicate the self centered attitude. You have the Vajra symbolizing the ultimate Bodhicitta to eradicate all the mental defilements, including self grasping ignorance, guaranteeing that your mental defilements to become rid of and that you become the full awakened being. The Buddha is amazing. But what about my two grandparents and all my dear Mother beings? That's true, out of great compassion towards all the dear Mother beings. This great compassion invokes the Vajra Muni the heart to multiply infinite number of times. Share one self of the Vajra Muni the heart at the heart to with your mom at her heart. One share of the Vajra Moon at the heart of your dad. One self of the Vajra Moon with each one of your children. Everyone here in Paris, everyone in France, in the world in the Milky Way galaxy, and everyone in the universe, the human beings, animals, insects, hummingbirds, hell beings, god and goddesses, Ashi, the, the Gandharvas, and Asuras, living in another side, the cats, the dogs, the cows, everyone. Okay. So with this, let us also not forget that all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas are with us. Buddhist Bodhisattvas, they are watching us. The way the parents, they are watching the child do so good. The Buddhist Bodhisattvas feel so proud of you. Why not we invite the Buddhist Bodhisattvas to be the witness and as the, the guest to a taken explanation Bodhisattva vow? So I suggest you requesting all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas to be the witness and the guest. Let us slowly stand up, imagining that 
all the sentient beings. With you, stand up to make three prostrations to all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas. Those who have no issue with the, uh, uh, the those who don't have any knee problem or the back knee problem, we can sit on the right knee. Others can sit whichever position more comfortable on a chair, whatever. Do that, and um, the, we'll turn to page page fifty, page five zero in English. Three verses. Five zero fifty English. <clears throat> okay. Um, so this is the actual ceremony of taking the expression Buddhist as a vow. And again, as already indicated earlier, visualize all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas in a space in front of in front of you. So loving, caring, embracing. And imagine that you are the, the you are very young age, 10, 11, as a girl or as a boy. And imagine that you are the, say it is your first, the, the performance in your life, the first in your life to do to performance on behalf of the school. And your parents are there, all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas says your parents they are there to just leaving aside everything and coming to observe what you're doing here and to just give your moral support and they bring their hands to you to see that they, they feel so proud of you that you are taking the expression Bodhisattva vow. You're also encouraging all your brothers and sisters, all the demonstration beings to take the Bodhisattva vow. And uh, the parents, your Buddhist Bodhisattvas, yes, your parents, they are so, so proud of you. And with this in mind, we are going to recite the, the three verses, the first verse three times. And the, the meaning is so important. I'm going to quickly explain the, the meanings. The first one, first verse is that the, you are making a commitment that I will, you are going to take the Bodhisattva vow. This is known as aspirational Bodhisattva vow. It's not the full flesh Bodhisattva vow. For the full flesh Bodhisattva vow, uh, there are several commitments uh, to hold, um, which you encourage to do only when you have some experience with Bodhisattva. Otherwise, taking the aspect of Bodhisattva, there is no any commitment. At best, um, the is that from today onwards, I'll try my best not to harm others. If possible, I'll try to help others. This much, if you can commit, you are entitled to take the expression of the vows. And for this, given that you are committing yourself to become Buddha for the benefit of the demonstration beings, it is a very important journey. And this journey requires a great, great, great support. And the greatest of the support is the three jewel, triple gem. So the first line says, I go for refuge to the triple gem. Just seeking the support of all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas in the journey towards Buddhahood. Then this journey is the journey of your mind. It's the journey of the mind. So the, the, this journey, the road must be very clear. And the, the road is none other than your own mind. And this mind must be clear of the mental blockage like negativities. So the second line says, I confess the negativities individually. So this journey, while the road is very clear, but if the car does not have fuel, again you cannot go. So the car should have enough fuel. This car is none other than your own mind. Your mind should have the enough fuel of the virtues, merits. So the third line says, I rejoice in the virtues of all the beings. And then, okay, now the road is very clear. 
there's no trees, borders blocking the road. Road is very clear and the car is in the fuel. What kind of journey are going to undertake? The journey of Buddhahood to become Buddha for the benefit of sentient beings. The last line reads, I hold the precious Buddhahood in my heart. Or you will say this three times together wholeheartedly and imagine that you are leading this and all the other sentient beings are joining you. <clears throat> and all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas so happily they are watching observing what are you doing. I go for refuge to the Triple Gem. I confess the negativities individually. I rejoice the virtues of all the beings. I hold the precious Buddha in my heart. I go for refuge to the Triple Gem. I confess the negativities individually. I rejoice the virtues of all the beings. I hold the precious Buddha in my heart. I go for refuge to the Triple Gem. I confess the negativities individually. I rejoice the virtues of all the beings. I hold the precious Buddha in my heart. Two times, three times. Ah. Done. Okay, so the next two lines is the actual ceremony. You invoke gurus, buddhas, and bodhisattvas, and then the uh, the first line says that how is that the Buddha Shakyamuni and all the past, all the buddhas of the past, how they succeeded in benefiting so much of the benefit to all these uh, sentient beings? It is done through two two ways. The, the, the two and the factors involved. The first motivation and the, the second one is the what materializes the motivation. The motivation and motivation bodhicitta. They generate the bodhicitta first as motivation and to materialize this aspiration of the bodhicitta they engage in bodhisattva practices like six perfections, ten perfections. Okay, if this is how they did, I will also follow the steps. I will also generate bodhicitta and I will also engage in bodhisattva practices like six perfections and perfe ten perfections. Okay, so we'll say this together. Hold hard. And through the, the third repetition, completing the last line of the third repetition, imagine that you have received the expression of Bodhisattva vow and just feel the joy of having received it. Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please be here to me. Just as previous Buddhas have generated the Madhu Bodhicitta, and just as they successfully dwell in the Bodhisattva practices, I was for the benefit of all sentient beings. I will generate Madhu Bodhicitta, and I was shall to successfully follow the Bodhisattva practices. Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please be here to me. Just as previous Buddhas have generated the Madhu Bodhicitta, and just as they successfully dwell in the Bodhisattva practices, I was for the benefit of all sentient beings. I will generate the Madhu Bodhicitta and our Shala to successful Bodhisattva practices. Gurus, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, please be here to me. Just as previous Buddhas have generated the Madhu Bodhicitta and just as they successfully dwell in the Bodhisattva practices, I was for the benefit of all sentient beings. I will generate the Madhu Bodhicitta and our Shala to successful of the Bodhisattva practices. Oh, you just feel the joy over having received the spirit Bodhisattva vow. Those who have read not received it. And thus far, you received it freshly. Those who have already received it before, imagine that it is invigorated, it is being strengthened by this practice. And in the process, all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas, they are so happy, so proud. They also have the Vajra Moon at their heart. And this happens in pride. All the Buddhist Bodhisattvas feel invoke the Vajra Moon at their heart to multiply infinite number of times. Like rain shower, they descend to merge with the one that you visualize your heart, at the heart of your mother, father, your children, all the human beings, animals, insects, cats, dogs, mosquitoes, ants, the asuras, gandharvas, god and goddesses, spirits, all the sentient beings living on the side. Okay, this is the, the greatest meaning of your life. Today we have extracted the meaning and this greatest gift that you can offer to your two kind parents and all the demonstrant human beings. Today you have gifted them with this and this greatest of the offerings that you can possibly make to all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Today you made it and this is the meaning of your life. This is the final meaning of life. And if you can do it on a daily basis, the same practice, it's amazing. You, there's something to be celebrated. This all happens because of the kindness of all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas. So, as a gesture of thanking all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas, let us again stand up to make three frustrations along with all Tiamat sentient beings.
I'll sit comfortably. Okay, um, so we see that in this life we are connected with the practice of bodhicitta, with the practice of wisdom of emptiness. But what about the future lifetimes? Will we come in contact with this teaching practice in the future lifetimes? So to make sure that it happens in the future lifetimes as well, uh, they <coughs> we include that in the form of very powerful prayer. So that is included here, page 51 in English. <coughs> Let's say this verse three times together wholeheartedly. Throughout my future lifetimes, may I always be guided by the compassion of Buddha and be able to, able to uphold the true precious bodhicitta's even at the cost of my life. Throughout my future lifetimes, may I always be guided by the compassion of Buddha and be able to uphold the true precious bodhicitta's even at the cost of my life. Throughout my future lifetimes, may I always be guided by the compassion of Buddha and be able to uphold the true precious bodhicitta's even at the cost of my life. And uh, that, okay, this is very important which of course I'll share with the other participants as well, that the individual, for example, let's say, they are here, maybe Venerable and myself, we are connected with the Buddhist teachings, we are born. So, one thing required is that we have to, in the future lifetimes, we should be connected. This is one thing. And there are many Tibetans, many Chinese who are connected, who are born in a Buddhist family, but they, they are not serious with the Buddhist practice. They are not serious with the Buddhist teachings. So, which means that the, um, once you're connected, once you are in the island, treasure island, don't relax. We have to you know, gather the treasure as much as possible. So, once connected, then to practice the Dharma diligently. That is also number two. Very important. In your case, although by birth you do not, you do not connect with the Dharma, but somehow you feel connected. Once you're connected, you are intensely going into it, which is so precious. So precious. So, in the future of times, connection is one important thing. Once you're connected, then rigorously engage in this too. So the following verses taken from Bodhisattva Shanti Deva's text, guided Bodhisattva Subhita 5. This is for us to, when you, when you hear the word Bodhicitta in your future lifetimes, when you hear somebody talking about Bodhicitta, you just feel at home. When somebody talks about emptiness, you just feel at home. So the, then naturally you go rigorous into this practice. So connection and rigorous practice. So for that matter, the remaining part is to feel the joy. We learn how to feel the joy when you practice Bodhicitta. So the four verses, they are to invoke the joy. How wonderful that I able, uh, that I met with this teaching on the Bodhicitta, with the practice of Bodhicitta. Okay, so this is what you find the from God Bodhisattva's verse. Let's see, uh, say this together. In order to further increase this bodhicitta from now on, those with discernment who have lucidly seized an awakening mind of bodhicitta in this way should highly praise it in the following manner. Today my life has borne fruit, having well obtained this human existence, I have been born in the family of the Buddha, and now I am one of Buddha's children. Thus, whatever actions I do from now on must be in accord with the family. Never shall I disgrace or pollute this noble and unsullied ways. Just like a blind person discovering a jewel in a heap of rubbish, but likewise by some coincidence an awakening mind has been born within me. It is a supreme ambrosia that overcomes the sovereignty of death. It is this inexhaustible treasure that limits all power in the world. It is a supreme medicine that quells the world's disease. It is a tree that shelters all beings, wandering and tired on the path of conditioned existence. It is a universal bridge that leads to freedom from unhappy states of birth. It is the dawning moon of the mind that dispels the torment of disturbing conceptions. It is a great sun that finally removes the, mis mis 
David, who are mystic ignorance of the world, is a quintessential butter from the channel of the milk of Dharma. For all those guests traveling on the path of conditioned existence who wish to experience the bondage of happiness, this will satisfy them with joy and actually place them in the supreme bliss. Today, in the presence of all the protectors, I invite the world to be guests as a festival of temporary and ultimate delight. May God's demigods and I all be joyful. Okay. Um, if we stop, um, I think we will uh, recite the mantras on the next page. Okay. Um, as we recite the mantras, the for example, let's say the first mantra, Buddha Shakyamuni mantra, invoke the, the deity, the Buddha, Arab, whatever, whichever deity, on your crown or in front of you, and the sending forth nectars through the crown, throat, and the heart towards you and towards all demonstration beings, thereby blessing you, remove the mental dirt, and so forth. This is what we do. Let's do like, say, the some longer mantras, like three times, shorter mantras, three times, not longer mantras, three times, and shorter mantras, 21 times. Okay. Om Mani Mani Mahamani Soha 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 Om Mani Mani Mahamani so ha o mane mane mahamani so o mane mane mahamani so ha o mane mane mahamani so ha o mane mane mahamani so o mane mane mahamani so ha o mane mane mahamani so ha o mane mane mahamani so o mane mane mahamani so ha o mane mane mahamani so ha o mane mane mahamani we recite the His Holiness Mantra seven times. O ma guru vaja dara bada raga manju shiri vagindra sumadi jana shasandara samundra shiri badra sravasidi ho ho O ma guru vaja dara bada raga manju shiri vagindra sumadi jana shasandara samundra shiri badra sravasidi ho ho O ma guru vaja dara bada raga manju shiri vagindra sumadi jana shasandara samundra shiri badra sravasidi O ma guru vaja dara bada raga manju shiri vagindra summa de jana shasandara samundara shiri badra sravasi do O ma guru vaja dara bada raga manju shiri vagindra summa de jana shasandara samundara shiri badra sravasi do O ma guru vaja dara bada raga manju shiri vagindra summa de jana shasandara samundara shiri badra sravasi do O ma guru vaja dara bada raga manju shiri vagindra summa de jana shasandara samundara shiri badra sawasi do ho ho O mani be moho 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 O Mara Bazana, the 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 O
سهان داره دو داره دو 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 ま、ナルシンボダマントラ、ダンショートワン。ティアダオンベワゼベワゼマンベワゼラザサモンガデソハティアダオンベワゼベワゼマンベワゼラザサモンガデソハティアダオンベワゼベワゼマンベワゼラ
all the great teachers such as Lama Subhar Bashi uh, live long and that they wish to be fulfilled spontaneously. And also the great learning centers such as Kanden, Sera, Debung, and then the from Sakya, Kaikyu, Nyuma, Gelo, the Chinese tradition, Tibetan tradition, Theravada tradition. All these learning centers thrive in the activities of study, refreshment, meditation. And let's also pray that the centers such as Kala Chakra thrive in the activities. The volunteers, they have good health, that the Dhamma practice, um, the be very fruitful, successful in the course of the volunteering. They are, you know, they are not being able to take part in the class like this, but that the their service be like the the factors to expedite their path to become enlightened, to experience emptiness, to experience bodhicitta as soon as possible. And so they the that all the learning centers like Alachara and the so for the in this world they all thrive in the activities of study, reflection, meditation of the body of the emptiness. And let us also pray that all those beings who pass away to this COVID nineteen and that and all others as well who pass for other reasons. And let's pray them that they take favorable birth to meet with the Dharma or the Bodhicitta and the wisdom of emptiness. Okay. With this mind, let's recite the, the verses together. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness in God. All powerful generous attends in Gyaso. Please remember her in Samsara hands. Just as a brave man Jewish summoned about the two realized things they they are. Also, I dedicate all this medicine in the best way that I may follow the perfect example. I dedicate all these rules of virtue with the dedication praise as the best by all the Buddhists who appeared in three times so that I might perform the noble Buddhists of these days. May the Supreme Buddha say that there is no reverse and rising grow, and may that which is reversed and not banish but increase forevermore. As long as space remains, as long as such needs remain, until then may I truly remain to dispel the miseries of the world. To the merits of these virtuous actions, may I could attain the state of Guru Buddha, and it all beings without exception into that enlightened state. I dedicate the merit thus gathered, with the realization that is the prayers of all the Buddhists and the Bodhisattvas of three times, and to the upholding the Dharma of teaching realization. May in all lives through the force of this merit, never separate from the four bills in my vehicle, and accomplish all the stages of the path, renunciation, bodhicitta, purifu in the two stages. With the wish to free all beings, I shall always go for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha until additional enlightenment. Inspired by wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I generate the mind of full awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. I go for refuge to a bull gem, I confess the negativities individually, I rejoice the virtues of all the beings, I hold the precious but in my heart. By the power of practicing subjugating to you, may all be free from sickness, poverty, and conflicts, and may Dharma and the auspicious are proliferate in all the places where we abide. The power of union about emptiness compassion is loosely explained by the potato Buddha, Dharma, and the beings who land snows. You are the lotus holder, Tenzin Gyatso, we subjugate you that you wish to suffer for spontaneously. May the operations, the evil thoughts, and deeds of the negative forces of humans and non humans, who are by malice through perverted prayers, again. Against the teachings of the Buddha, be true to vanquish through the power of the truth of three jewels. In all my lives, never separate from perfect gurus, may enjoy the magnificent Dharma by completing quality of stages and paths, may could attain the state of Vajratara. Throughout my future lifetimes, may always be guided by the Majushri and be able to uphold the Dharma in general and the teachings of the dependent origin in particular, even though it costs my life. Gate, 